We respectfully request the Sangha Great Virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how can birth and death leave suffering and attain bliss and quickly realize non-birth. Kung thin dai du tang thin Pi thu pha hoi kap nha ti hiếp chung san Tịnh chiến diệu phạm luân giao đạo ngã mộng Như há liệu sanh thỏa tư lý khô đạc lạc Tốt chứng vô sanh <cười> How much to the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one. Namo Sadanto Suche Do Ye Ola Hodi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Tadaka To Ya Daya La De Tam Yo Tam Bo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one true and actual principles. Wu shang sheng sheng wei miao fa ba hi chen wan chen an zao yi wo jin jian wan te shou chi yen jie ru lai zhe shi yi O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Xuan Hua, all good monks and nuns, and all good new advisors and made of all. Chu Fu Pu Sa, Ching Liang Ta Shi, Shi Fu Shang Ren, Go Wei, Chu Xia Ren, Go Wei, Shang Chu Shi, made of all. Chi Phật Bồ Tát, Kinh Tư, Thanh Lương Đại Sư, Và Thượng Tiên Hoa, Quý Thầy Cô Phật Ca, Kỳ Thị Thị Sư, Chi Thức A Di Đà Phật. Hello everyone, today is the, uh, I don't know what day is today. Eighteenth of June, 2023. Uh, we are here at uh, DTT, Dharma Territory Temple, to continue discussing the first chapter of the uh, Vatamsaka Sutra. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we are in at, on slide 188, talking about the celestial kings, war rulers of third dhyana heavens, right? So this is kind of light duty where you learn uh, about these uh, beings and they just spend a lot of time, a lot of time looking into the Dharma doors and name and so forth, sort of like opening up your mind into seeing the world is a lot bigger than you think, that you imagine, uh, and that how small we really are, our world, as our world is one of countless worlds in the universe. So, um, that's not think too highly of ourselves. Even if you're a president or, or, or whatever you are on this earth, you really are nothing. You know, emperor, nothing. The celestial kings are actually a Mahasattvas who are ruling over many, many uh, worlds, heavens and many, many worlds. And therefore, you see the, you see, you, the, the sutra begins by 
uh, by trying to expand our points of reference, it's a lot wider, a lot bigger than you think. Okay, can I, uh, can we do adjust a little bit? It seems to me my sound is very loud. And, and uh, uh, it doesn't bother you, but to me, there's a, there's a quite loud, and, and I can hear myself all the way to the end of the Buddha Hall. It, uh, is it too loud for you too, or just my, my imagination? Okay. Uh, all right. A little bit lower, please. Okay. There you go. That's uh, slightly lower, 10% lower. Yes? Okay, now it's more normal because I hear myself, this, the echo coming back to my ears. And then when people talk in the audience, I can't hear you, so I go crazy. Is it my imagination here again or what? Okay, so these celestial kings are actually ruling over many, many heavens, many, many worlds, and therefore, therefore they're really, really big shots. But you see, you're getting a glimpse into what, how they got there and what they, they're doing to earn the spot. So that's point number two. Wherever we are in the world, we're supposed to earn our way. Nothing is ever given to us, and they constantly are earning the way. They got there, they got promoted there, they're there to continue to work harder and contribute even more. This is a kind of mindset of people who have wisdom, not the people who are getting a, try to get a free ride and loaf along. Okay? Uh, if you want to, if you, you, have, you really have wisdom, then you will, you will uh, produce. As simple as that. Mm. With status comes responsibility. We earn our spots. Uh, so this is a f lesson we're learning. Uh, we have to or deserve where we stand, uh, where we sit, uh, what's given to us. Mm. All right? Mm. So 188. Celestial King, transformation banner, gain a passage into liberation of using universal compassion and wisdom to contemplate the countless afflictions of sentient beings. Okay, I'm learning a new system here, so... Uh, all right. Uh, uh, commentary, commentary slide 189. Mm. So this celestial king transformation banner. First of all, uh, banner is uh, a, a specific Buddhist tool. Uh, number one, for first purpose, is to adorn the Buddha uh, and the Bodhisattva way places. Uh, you see, you know, very much like uh, you come to the temple and naturally when you uh, like the temple, admire the temple, then you want to adorn it naturally. And by the way, if I can get some of you to volunteer to do the weeding in front, it would be very nice. Because people walk by a lot, and they see that we have a lot of wild weeds and stuff in in the in the small garden we have here, and that's a small offering we have to the neighborhood. Okay, and so uh, keep that in mind that we have uh, people who live around here, or I know you come from far away. I don't expect you to uh, do that, but the local people. Uh, if they consider helping the temple, that's one of the functions we could uh, ask for help. Uh, and that is to weed. And it's a very, very, uh, very um, calming effect, very pleasant experience, I feel, for, for a lot of people. I wish I had time to do that. Okay. Uh, so that's how you adorn a way place. Okay. And that's part of cultivation. 
Don't think we're frivolous. Therefore, we, we are attached to appear, appearances. No, we are adorned in a way place so that when the visitors come, they are naturally uh, favorably predisposed towards us because it's a pleasant experience. It's pleasant to the eyes. Yes, seven. There's a couple of questions. Actually, um, there's two questions from Ray and two questions from Yang Min in China. Ray J has uh, the question is how far can lay people reach in cultivation without becoming left home? And at what point should a cultivator consider becoming left home to cultivate? Good questions. There's no limit to how far a lay person can go. And what is my uh, what is my proof? What is my reference points? You find them in the Buddhist sutras. Eventually, we'll discuss the Vimala Kirti Sutra. Mr. Vim Vimala Kirti is basically an elder, so he's a layman, and actually, he uh, has more wisdom than Bodhisattvas even. Mm -hmm. He's actually a transformation body of the Buddha, mm, of a Buddha. And therefore, you see, that's a message to all of us that there's no limit to how far you can go. It doesn't matter who you are, lay person or left home people. Uh, however, uh, in terms of transmission of the Dharma, the Buddha made it very specific, very clear. Only monks and nuns will be relied upon to be the transmitter of the Dharma. Fa yi san chuan, that's what the Chinese says, the, the phrase is. Fa uh, yi tang tui, meaning that the Dharma, the Buddha Dharma, uh, relies on the Sangha for its transmission. Now, uh, san here is Sangha. It is not necessarily monks. Usually the Chinese understand it as monks. I happen to look at the Sangha as both monks and nuns. And especially in the West, they have a problem. They said, we, uh, we favor monks and we uh, don't look very highly of, uh, of nuns. Maybe it's an Asian case. But here in the U.S., in my personal view, monks and nuns to me are the same. Traditionally, you have the temple <clears throat> where traditionally the monks walk in front, doesn't matter how many years, okay? The nuns will always have to walk behind the monks by seniority. So, for example, a nun, the Buddha says, a nun by 100 years of Dharma ages still have to walk and bow to a monk who has one day of fully ordination. That's the order uh, of seniority in the Buddha Dharma. Uh, that is true. We observe it too. However, mm, however, uh, for our temple, uh, I feel differently. I feel that uh, when you, uh, when, when in general, when we join all the temples, all the assemblies, we follow the local temple's rules. My rules are different. My rules are that, uh, yes, I will obey the Buddha's order, uh, of uh, monks before nuns and so forth. However, uh, when, uh, when the, the monks and nuns uh, have accomplished, are accomplishing their cultivation, then what happens is that it's no longer, no, no longer gender discrimination. You understand? Bodhisattvas are neither male nor female. You go to the Pure Land, it's no, it is no gender discrimination whatsoever. You see? Uh, so in, in our style world, yes, we have a gender discrimination. However, uh, once you accomplish your cultivation to a certain level, uh, monks and nuns are the same. It's only one gender. There's no more discrimination. So when I look at that, I say, okay, in that case then, I will no longer discriminate uh, those monks and nuns who have accomplished are accomplishing their cultivation. And then what do I do? I, in our temple only, I will allow them to walk ahead of the monks or the nuns. All right? Why? 
because there are a lot more virtuous, much higher status than all the other monks. It doesn't matter who, doesn't matter who they are. Okay? The reason they observe it is because the Buddha is teaching a you respect virtue. Okay? You respect the virtuous ones. And therefore, I'm teaching my, my disciples the same thing here in the temple. Those people who are accomplished in the cultivation are a lot more virtuous than the lower levels. Therefore, you should be respectful instead of being petty and jealous. And stop your discriminating mind. Okay? So, so that's why the Dharma is different. Uh, the monks uh, have their different kind, as different kind of world uh, where, where uh, uh, there is a world out there where traditionally this is what we do. We go, we merge into another uh, body, another temple, another association, then we follow their rules. But our rules here is I don't care if you even uh, the, uh, the, um, um, the senior monks who come here, uh, I don't expect my nuns who are accomplished in cultivation to bow to them. Okay? It's up to them. I don't care what they do. But we don't discriminate. I don't discriminate. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so what time, at what point in time do we, uh, should you consider um, shaving your head? Mm. You don't need to shave your head. Mm. Your cultivation as a lay person, you can make it like the six pay chart. Okay? Then, kudos to you. However, uh, the Buddha created something called a Sangha training program where it's a specialized program where we actually, the temple, this, the, 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 uh, the, the um, Buddhists and Bodhisattvas help us invest in you, sanghans, so that you don't have to worry about rent, you don't have to worry about money, you don't have to worry about mortgage payments, you don't have to worry about the worldly things so that your mind is free from many, many afflictions so that we can, so that you can concentrate on your spiritual practice. Therefore, uh, besides the specialized training program, because it's more intense than lay people, then uh, your chances of accomplishing the way are a lot higher than lay people, a lot faster than lay people on the average. Okay, so that's why at some point in time, if you are accomplished and you wish to remain a lay person, there's nothing wrong with that. There's people out there like Mr. Buffet and Mr., you know, all many, many lay people who are enlightened who choose to do what they do. Uh, I just frown upon Mr. Buffet because Mr. Buffet, having, being, uh, having real wisdom, would make money by investing in companies who are actually harmful to living beings. I don't like it. Okay, he's too smart. He, could, he has much better ways to make money than that. Mm. Uh, and so, and so uh, you can be a lay person to do whatever you want to do. Become president, become uh, an investor, become uh, whatever you wish to do. Uh, your, you have wisdom, so you choose whatever suits your, uh, your desires. However, only one can time when you, you should consider shaving your head that is one you want to teach and transmit the Dharma. Okay? When you need to transmit the Dharma, transmit what you know to the next generation or your peers, then you should don uh, a Sangha, some Sangha clothes. That's the, my only hope for you. That I hope that when you want to teach, do not teach as a lay person. That's wrong. You may teach as a lay person under a monk. Therefore, if you're wisdom, you actually are certifying that monk to be your teacher. Okay? So the system is a lot healthier. No. Whereas you lay person and you have wisdom and that's how you enlighten and uh, you teach the Dharma, it causes problems for stupid monks like me. Okay, 
because you are, your words have more wisdom, are much better than mine. Therefore, they don't need to go seek advices or instructions from the Sangha anymore. Okay, and you're destroying my Sangha. You're competing with my Sangha. And so, for example, uh, the, uh, the uh, Chan teachings, I don't care. I will teach you all the way uh, as per the six bay charts um, example. But the Pure Land Dharma door, for example, I will never transmit the, the highest level of Pure Land Dharma door to a lay person, only to monks and nuns, because the Pure Land Dharma door is in big trouble right now. It's dying right now because of the many bad monk teachers. Okay, so when you are ready to teach, you want to teach, then shave your head. If not, you do whatever you wish. No one will force you. Did I answer both questions? Okay, next question. Yang Min from China has two questions. <clears throat> Question one, uh, basically, wait, first of all, these two questions she's asking, what should she do? Question one is, my husband is unhappy for my meditation. He worries that I am with a group of meditators every day and under their influence. I will abandon my husband and son and become a nun. His second worry is that I no longer need him and he is useless to me when I am having more Chan, con chan concentration and he felt no connection with me as a husband. Did you want me to ask the question too? Yeah, repeat question two. Question two is my... Sorry. When the, the, when the long sentences, you, you slur and you no longer have inflection in your, in your words. That's why it's difficult to listen to you. The first question, you have clear in, uh, inflections. And the second question, because it's long, your, you, uh, your breathing is affecting your inflection of the English words. Oh. Repeat it, please. Breathe properly. The first, uh, the first question is, my husband my is... The first question is okay. I heard it already. Oh, I asked for the second question, to re for you to repeat it. Um, actually, yeah, that was the first one. I didn't get the second one, but I think it's probably the second. So the first question. question. Okay, repeat it then. Okay. My husband is unhappy for my meditation. He worries that I am with a group of meditators every day and under their influence. I will abandon my husband and son and become a nun. His second worry is that I no longer need him and he is useless to me when I am having more Chan concentration. And he felt no connection with me as a husband. So what's the question? She's asking, what should she do? Okay, second question. My supervisor is very good to me, but she also sends me a lot of negative energy, constantly talking to me about her personal life. Sometimes I am not nice to her. I have the look that I am in a bad mood. Please don't talk to me. It bothers me that she cares so much for me, but I do not want her Sorry, I do not want to hear her problems. So what's the problem? What's the question? Mm. She's asking what she should do in these situations. Did you, is this your, your, your uh, statement or her statement? I'm curious. It's her. She said, what shall I do? What should I do? Why did you drop it? I'm trying to understand you. There's a problem statement. You, you read the, 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 the question and then you drop the last sentence. What should I do? Mm. Okay, the first question, I don't know, is a common problem. When women go to the temple and meditate and do their spiritual practices, their husband feels threatened. 
for various reasons. They feel neglected, they feel it's a waste of time, they feel that uh, uh, she will end up not needing them anymore and so forth. What else is new? We have a lot of men who are insecure, especially husbands who are weak. What are we supposed to do? And the more you cultivate, you become stronger. Now you're stronger than them already because you're cultivating. The more you cultivate, and if you happen to improve, oh boy, and then you look at your husband, you're such a baby. What are we supposed to do? I have no idea. I just don't like weak people. Okay? But then, there's nothing new. Men are weak. We are weak. We're very weak. We need you. We need our mamas. <laughs> we miss our mamas. Huh? What else is new? So, deal with it. I don't know. What are we supposed to do? I'm sure you had similar issues before, and you survived. What did you do? I have no idea. Huh? Any suggestions for the lady? She's Chinese, remember, not American. So maybe a Chinese people who have some experiences, who are married. I'm sure that most of you go through this phase of the husband feeling threatened and wanting their mamas. Okay? Anyone? No suggestions? Koreans is not an issue because most Koreans are still single in our temples. <laughs> he said, ah, no, I never get married. <laughs> They're too weak. Men are too weak. <laughs> Women are too strong. <laughs> I remember going to, uh, to uh, uh, Konk and eating lunch, and there's this man here who says, uh, yeah, How come your women here are so strong? <laughs> and they all look at me and say, why are you so weak? <laughs> I'm going back to my wife where she still adores me and looks up to me. Yes, uh, nine. Thank you, Master. Um, for a husband who act like that, then women need to be more attentive to him. Just show him some attention. Before you go, you still mama's boy? Huh? Is that what you tell him? <laughs> yeah. And mama is still here. Because he's Mommy still, is still here. Because he's not mature, then you do it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> yeah. No personal experience? No one ever faced this problem before? No? Come on, speak up. Not just husband, but boyfriends too, right? And sometimes it's girlfriends. We don't have a lot of men here, but sometimes the girls who complain that you, you know, you're neglecting me. Yes, nine. 네, 저는 엄마가 좀 걱정을 많이 하시고 너무 절에 자주 다닌다고 전화를 계속 하시면서 걱정을 하셨는데 저번에 마스터가 한국에 들어오셨을 때 어, 엄마 보고 좀 올라와서 같이 절에도 가고 어, 살이 전시에도 같이 가자고 해서 엄마가 올라와 가지고 좀 마스터도 한번 뵙고 마스터 법문도 일부러 듣게끔 좀 앉혀 놓고 저는 도망 나가서 공양간에 있었거든요. 그래서 그것도 듣고 살이 전시에도 보시고 난 뒤에는 제가 절에 간다고 하면 어 그래 절에 가는구나. 근데 데이트도 좀 하렴 하면서 이제는 별로 그런 거에 대해서 신경을 안 쓰세요.
Master, in that case, it's about, in my case, it's about my mom. Um, she used to call me and worry then when I'm going to temple. Um, but what I did was last time when you visited Korea, I invited my mom and her to come to the temple and also participate on uh, relic exhibits. So she was able to listen to Dharma talk and she visited relic exhibits. And what I did was I was just hiding in the kitchen while she's listening to your Dharma talk. But now things are changed. Uh, she called me, she says, oh, it's okay. And she's no longer bothered. And she sometimes say, oh, it's okay to go to temple, but why don't you date a little bit also? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So invite mommy, invite the husband to the temple. Okay. And you find something for the husband that would, would motivate him, such as food, whatever he was, you know, what, whatever he's might, he might be interested in. But if he really cares, he may want to show up to the temple, okay, just to investigate. This is what happens to a lot of people, especially your family members who are worried about you. Typically, you know what they do? They don't say anything. They quietly pretend to follow you, drive you to the temple, actually go in to check it out. And they walk away and say, hmm, this is a cult. Be careful, honey. <laughs> Where are the Buddha statues? <laughs> okay, we have that constantly the last 16 years. Where are the statues? Is it Buddha Hall? So, so yes, uh, if, uh, if they are insecure about it, it's not a whole lot you can do. So, in general, if they are sincere, they really are, instead of whining, you know, like weaklings do, well, they, I hope her husband is not listening, then, 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 uh, then you, have, you have real good reasons, uh, real good chances. For the ones who are whining and um, crying for mamas, for their mamas, hang to mama's skirts. Uh, uh, it's not a whole lot you can do. Uh, you, you have to reassure them. They're feeling insecure, so you have to do things to deal with their insecurities. Uh, perhaps um, show more love when you come back from the temple. You come back to the temple and go and say, Honey, I miss you! Kiss me! <laughs> it has a way of reassuring men very quickly. So, oh, you should go to the temple more often. You come back, you find me much more attractive. <laughs> so, you, you, lots of things you can do, okay? So whatever it is, is a problem. They're insecure. So, deal with the insecurity. Make them, uh, give them, uh, reassure them that they really have no reasons to be insecure, okay? And, and uh, address each of these issues one by one, gradually. I would typically recommend all of you, men or women, that uh, when you, uh, after you uh, go back from a temple, bring something back from the temple when you can, like some good food or something, uh, and, or stop by uh, a supermarket and uh, get some flowers or something. Say, ah, I pick some flowers from the temple for you. You know, whatever it is, you, 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 you do things to show you thinking of them. And, and men like it. Yeah. You just have to use the proper, the proper incentives for them. You know, if, you know the, cons, the, the, the concept is that when you, go, you come home, you go home, and you bring something uh, that benefits him, that he likes. Then he said, oh, you know, next time you should go to the temple more often and get more goodies when you're back. You see, I use bribery. I would use bribery, okay? Mm. Until uh, they become a little bit more mature, less insecure, and then, and then you go to the next phase when you bring them to the temple. Mm. Mm. All right, it's a long process. There's no real quick answers. 
And on, on the other hand, there's a lot of men who are controlling and say, I forbid you from going to the temple. Okay? Then don't go to the temple. That's all. There's online classes now. He has to go to work, right? So when he go, after he goes to work, turn on the TV. <laughs> See, you have to be patient. That's part of cultivation. It's called obstructions. If you find the great Dharma, you're going to have a lot of obstructions. When you're about to improve, you're going to encounter obstructions. Okay? Expect it to happen. That's all. And you have to learn to deal with the obstructions. One at a time. That's all. No need to panic. All right? And what's the number two? Someone remind me what the problem, the question number two. What is it? So you go to work, and your boss has negative energy. Of course bosses have negative energy. You know what it takes to be a boss? You worry. You worry a lot. It's so stressful as a, as, a, as a worker right now, when you get promoted to supervise others or manage others, your stress level increase um, manifold. Because now instead of worrying about your own issues, you have to worry about a lot of people's issues. Yeah. So that's normal that they, are, they have a lot of anxiety, they have a lot of stress, lots of mental issues. Okay. So for them to come to you is a good thing because they, could, they realize they can dump on you and that gives them relief. So if you really, I don't know where you cultivate, but uh, it's, I think it's nice to just, uh, just learn to accept it. Okay? Yes, they, when you talk to them, they're dumping on you, they're releasing their, their negative energy on you, and uh, that's part of life part of work. You may not like it, but you have, uh, you have an antidote. Okay? If it's too much, cut it short and say, oh, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay? And go to the bathroom and sit there for five, ten minutes and meditate in the bathroom. Um, um. <laughs> Until you recover and come back. Maybe then, uh, and then you say, oh, I'm back. Dump on me. Continue, continue, okay? Yeah. It's called giving. Sometimes, well, sometimes when you have, uh, you're stronger and you can take it, it's okay to let people dump on you, especially if it's your boss. It would help hmm? with your performance and comes uh, a race time. All right, I wouldn't worry too much about the boss and uh, don't be such a crybaby. I don't like you, you're such a negative energy. Well, that's part of life. You try to minimize as much as you can, uh, but it, it, it's, uh, she's your boss. What choices do you have? Uh, you have a co-worker who has a lot of negative energy. You can avoid that person. So if it's your boss, then find a way to either, either uh, uh, get promoted or whatever, but, uh, but uh, you can handle it, okay? Hmm. Did I answer the questions? Okay. Yes, Wei Mao. Thank you, Master. I wanted to say I appreciate you mentioning uh, weeding the garden outside of DTT. Um, while I was at Fo Chi, I had the opportunity to spend a little time, uh, I guess, like pruning the different succulents, like the desert roses, and pulling up some weeds. And people from the community took notice, you know. You, you notice when people are kind of watching and seeing who's at the temple and when they see people outside, like I've spent time with uh, Venerable Shentong gardening as well, and it's a, it's a positive impact on the community and lets people know that there's humans there. Uh, there's real people. 
And it felt like I was also giving back to the way place and kind of, you know, I don't know, like giving it a haircut's the right metaphor, but, you know, just tending to the way place. It felt good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Yes, in the back. Seven. Uh, Master, I have two questions. Uh, one is a quick one. First one is a quick. Uh, I'm asking for Ipje, who is fasting. Uh, she has a strong craving for sparkling water. So we were discussing if it's okay to drink sparkling water when you're fasting because in, after all, it's just water with air. So could you <laughs> answer her, that question? Sparkling water was not invented yet when Master Shehua uh, transmitted the, uh, the fasting dharma to us. So my being conservative, that's not allow sparkling waters. How is that? Because it's uh, uh, in a gray zone, and I'm very conservative. Endure. Next. Uh, second question is uh, around about 49 days plaque. It came up after the uh, four cheese dharma talk around pre-49 days and 49 days. So the question is that usually for 49 days, the uh, benefit, uh, benefactor only got only gets one seventh of the blessings, and then the sponsor gets six sevenths of the stu of the blessings. So it was mentioned that if we leave the sponsor to be empty, then uh, that the benefactor can get hundred percent of the blessing. Master, could you confirm that? No, it's not. That's not how it works. When after you die, the people go to the temple and request a 49 days service for you, you get one seventh and, the, and they get six sevenths. That's what the Buddha taught. So you're trying to circumvent it by saying that I leave a blank and there's no sponsor. It's not about the name, it's about the person who benefited you. Therefore, they get the blessings whether there's a name or not. If you're saying that, what if I, uh, I uh, don't want a blessing I give to the deceased? Okay? It's your blessing. You can do whatever you want with it. You can burn it. You can, you can bury it. You can give it to the deceased. It's up to you. So what's the problem? So, Master, what I'm hearing is that it's not about if we leave the sponsor then to be empty or not. Uh, your blessings is yours. That's all. The Buddha does not, does not prohibit you from giving it away. Uh, when we give blessing to people like that, can we do it right? Just like that, or is there any special dharma of how to transfer that blessing? Oh, you should go to a church, <laughs> kneel down, say, Oh Lord, I want to give these blessings to the deceased. Okay, and amen, and you bow three times. All right, and that's much better. Someone is uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, acts as a witness to your act of giving. All right. What else you need to know? We're not above. We're not above going to the church and and adorning the church, because of you. You know, you go there and you, oh Lord, Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm practicing giving. Yes? Anyone else? Yes, Wayne Martin. 
Master, I, I just have a comment for you. Um, if if one was to do that special blessing in a church, they should then follow it up with a Hail Mary. Hail Mary. Okay, there you go. Thank you very much. I'm learning. Yes. Uh, please teach me. Yeah. Okay, seven. Question from Twi. Yes. To help with clothing waste, I've been buying used clothing from thrift stores. Thrift store, stores. However, I recently found out that clo old clothing can carry negative energy from previous owner. Should I avoid buying old clothes, or is there a way to purify the energy before wearing the clothes? Well, it's kind of a tough question. The energy stays in the fibers of the clothes. How are we going to get rid of the bad energy from the clothes? Fibers. I've never tried it before, okay? Mm, but uh, but uh, if uh, you wear it long enough, it will go away. I wouldn't worry so much about bad energy from, from uh, the clothes. Uh, for example, if you say that, then people will give money to the temple. The bad energy stays in the dollar bills. What a horrible thing. <laughs> okay, especially most of you have bad energy as far as we are concerned. And even after days of meditation, it's so, still so much bad energy. <laughs> Okay, it's too much. Don't worry so much about it. It's okay. Uh, do as you please. I wouldn't worry about bad energy from clothes. That's not important. Not, it's inconsequential, if you will. Yes, Wei Mountain. Master, there is a... Uh I think a bias that happened uh, during the time that I was young is also in the uh, Vietnamese community as well. Can you help demystif demystify this? So they say that when you throw away the clothes from uh, the disease out there and a lot of people take it, does that clothes um, carry negative energy? And uh, I heard in a lot of story that people that the disease come and then beg or knack about their clothes and bothers their life, those who are wearing those clothes. Is that true? Yeah, or it happens. Anything? Sure. Sometimes they are very attached to the clothes and therefore they come harass you and say, uh, you should take a shower before you wear my clothes. Have you no respect? Yeah. It is, it, is, uh, uh, it is very good fabric. You're not going to find this kind of fabric anymore. Mm. Okay, so what kind of person are you? Mm. You know, culture whatsoever, no class whatsoever. You know, don't appreciate good things. So, of course, some of them uh, uh, harass you and so forth. It's true. Uh, so what you do is then uh, you, you uh, purify it. Yeah. You can... You can uh, you can uh, purify it by by what by reciting mantras, you know, by reciting the Buddha's name. Say, go away, man. Leave me alone. Okay. Yeah. So, um, of course, there are ways to counter that. They're just stupid ghosts anyway. Yeah. And so, uh, so what? You know, if the ghost comes and harass you, okay, learn to deal with it. It's, they're not the only ones who will harass you. There are plenty of ghosts around. Mm. You go to the Qinghai's uh, temp, uh, restaurants, for example, those love huts or whatever places I've been eating recently and the Koreans bring me to, uh, you guys don't know what you're doing. You, <laughs> I, I, I used to go to those love huts things, okay, in the U.S. and in Korea as well. 
And uh, very often, their Dharma protectors harass me and say, Get out of here. You don't belong here. You emit too much light. Uh, we don't like you. You never enjoy the food here. Don't ever. Don't stay long. Go away. Okay? So I didn't say anything. Okay, I endured it. See, if I ask you to endure it, I endure it too, okay? Mm. Before I tell you to endure, I must endure first. And then pretty soon they said, since I don't do anything, they in turn, they start bothering my, my, uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, fellow restaurant goers. And some of them, some of them are weak. And therefore I said, well, enough is enough. I tell you what. This is maybe your restaurant, maybe your territory, but I'm the customer. I'm entitled to eating in peace. So I tell you what, you go, stand over there a mile away, and you come back, I will beat you up. You cannot come back until I'm done. Get out. Why? Because I pay. As a customer, I have the right they gave me a right to eat in peace, okay? And therefore, if you harass me, I'm entitled to kick you out. So the restaurant became very peaceful in Gangnam. <laughs> Serves you right. You go to the wrong places to eat, yeah, that's what you get. I'm not complaining. I enjoyed it. It's just life. JMT. JMT is pretty close to Gangnam, by the way. <laughs> Closer than uh, San Francisco. 네, 안녕하십니까, 마스터. 저는 여름. Hi, Master. This is my first summer chi. And I started my fasting today. Uh, what should I do for the rest of retreat? Don't eat. <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone else? Okay, it's a lot of suffering. People don't realize that. Uh, fasting is uh, rather uh, uncomfortable. And the first few days are okay, but uh, as the longer you do it, it could get very, very painful, very difficult. Okay? So and that's what you have to do. The lesson you're learning is that you have to endure. If you endure more and more, uh, with the proper methodology, then you will make progress. You have to earn your progress. It's not going to be given to you. Okay? And for cultivators, especially left home people, you're supposed to learn to endure suffering, more and more suffering, not run away from suffering. Like lay people, left home people, or you who cultivate, need to learn how to endure, learn the proper way to endure. What's the proper way to endure? Follow the instructions. Okay, so what instructions? I told you, don't eat. All right. Hmm. Yeah, continue. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you, Master. Uh, 어떻게 하면 되겠습니까? Thank you, Master. So, what should I do when I sit? Cross your legs. <laughs> Don't move. Thank you, Master. Okay. 
the mindset is that you should be grateful for the opportunity to practice. There's a lot more going on than you realize. You think you can fast by yourself at home? You probably will have a lot of problems, a lot more than here at the temple. So a lot of things are happening behind the scenes to assist you in your practice. So, and part of that is that you just try your best. We're not going to solve all your problems for you. You will receive instructions when you have problems. We have no problems, then do what you're supposed to do. We're not going to give, tell you everything and ensure there is a, your fasting or your practice is a, a guaranteed success. Not at all. You're supposed to struggle. You're supposed to do it and then discover yourself. There's no guarantee for success. Okay? Anyone else? Yes, seven. San Fran Daniel has a comment. He says, Master, I get a similar experience from going to those kind of food establishments, establishments that you mentioned. Just wanted to share because I thought it was just, it was just my imagination. Yeah, it happens. Not just food places, but also all sorts of places. I was harassed by, uh, by, uh, by a demon in my own temple. I told you about briefly. And I said, seriously, it's my temple. And you dare harass me in my temple. I know, I know you can harass my disciples, but you can't harass me. Uh, I happen to be in a bad mood that day. That's all. Usually I endure. Yes, Bundang. JC? We cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, so going back to the uh, lecture, uh, Banner also uh, carries a, a very important uh, meaning uh, in Buddhism. Uh, it's very much, I give the, you an analogy of the army banner. As you think of you will, picture you will in, in Japan where they had, during the Shogun era, you had these feuding uh, lords who would see how the, how the lords try to invade each other and the armies would carry a banner of certain color so that they, when they attack each other, you can see uh, you're supposed, who you're supposed to kill. Okay? Uh, and so, so, uh, so the banner uh, for the army represents, uh, uh, represents uh, who you are, in particular in Buddhism. Uh, the banner here is a banner to, uh, to represent that we part of the army of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, that we're waging war against the demons. And they better watch out, because our banner says, this is Buddha Dharma banner. You mess with us, you're going to be sorry. That's all. Don't tell me I didn't warn you. You cannot see me. I understand that. But when I put a banner up, when I put a name there in the temple, before it's a church, whatever I put it now, I name this is now Dharma Treasury Temple. When you walk in here, you better be careful because I warned you already. Okay, same thing on banner. Banner is that I am part of the Buddhist and Bodhisattvas army. Okay, you better watch out. You mess with us, 
you're going to be sorry because we don't unfurl our banner unless we mean business. Okay? So you can't blame us for being uh, impolite. Okay? Because basically, the armies of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas uh, can crush all the demons' armies. And what, how, what is the relationship of the demons' armies to you? Demons' armies uh, are behind your afflictions. Think of your will, something very practical, close to home. You feel depressed, meaning there's a demon of depression harassing you, or it's retinues harassing you. It's no joking matter, folks. Okay? And for such cases, uh, only cults like us will have a better chance to help you because chemicals, therapy is not going to help. Your own meditation will help very little, only temporarily. Why is that? Because I've seen from personal experience, fourth stage arhats and bodhisattvas who are overwhelmed by demons' armies. Okay? So, so that's why uh, those low-level bodhisattvas would not have a banner. We don't allow them to have banners. Okay? Uh, shouldn't have banners. Uh, but when we unfurl a banner, we put their name there, you know, Dharma Churchy Temple, Way Mountain Temple, okay? Uh, then, uh, then it's a very gentle warning that demons, be careful. Don't mess with us because we are the armies of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. All right? Mm. And so there's the point here for, the, for you to realize that when you're afflicted, your severe afflictions, uh, such as, let's say, drug dependencies, alcohol dependency, chemical dependencies, your addiction to cigarettes, to smoking, uh, and so forth, and drugs, and so forth. Those actually, you should know, those actually, uh, there are demons behind them. Take, for example, uh, young people and, uh, and uh, kids are very drawn to video games, computer games. Uh, that's, uh, there's a demon behind it. And that's why it's so addictive. I used to stay up two or three nights in a row to play video games to the point where, where I was going like this all day, okay, 24 hours a day, to the point where, where, where everyone's sleeping. I said, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> this is good. <laughs> and it was so bad that my, all my fingers was, was like, as cold as ice, because <laughs> everything is spent up here. All the chi is drawn up here and going to the screen. So all your chi is drawn up here and wasted out. Uh, so that's how you drain yourself. So addictive. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay? Uh, and so, and so uh, there are lots of things going on in the world that... Uh, more than you think, a lot more going on behind the scenes than you think. So you see, if the demons are behind it, guess what? The Buddhas and Bodhisattvas too are helping you behind the scenes as well. If you have faith, if you have the blessings, if you believe. Okay? Hmm. All right, next question, next uh, slide. Uh, 190 commentary. Uh, he has, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh, he contemplates, uh, and the contemplation is a Buddhist dharma. It's not talking about regular thinking like people like to do. When you ask them and say, uh, how do you fix this problem? Well, let's say at work. You know, your answer is that, let me think. Huh? Mm. So 
thinking is using your brain, your thinking mind. Contemplate is to use your wisdom mind, your mind of wisdom. Okay, so it's a different process. It's not thinking. Do not confuse contemplate, contemplation with thinking. Contemplation basically is to meditate. Okay, uh, and so as you, when we teach you Chan meditation, it's only the beginning of a life long skill you can use where you can use your contemplation power to resolve your problems, whether it's personal, whether it's at work. Uh, you draw upon your innate wisdom to solve your problems, which makes you a superior individual. So that's why the more advanced you become, the more skilled you are at meditation, uh, at spiritual cultivation, uh, the more power you have in your contemplation technique. Okay? Mm. So he contemplates uh, and he can see that uh, the sentient beings have countless afflictions. It's amazing how living beings accept the fact that they're drowning in afflictions. And they, they, and they, they take it as, as normal to be, to be afflicted. Okay? Why is that? Because they don't know better. They don't know the alternative. This is why meditation is so powerful. Not just Buddhist, but any sort of meditation will help you take a break from that. When you're afflicted, you have to contemplate. You have to meditate. Okay? So that's why I urge you. Well, not necessarily you need to do Buddhist meditation, but any form of meditation, Tai Chi, Qigong, okay? uh, yoga. Can I show off? <laughs> I'm no longer that flexible. My, uh, my thighs are too big now, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, so, you see, all those things are actually very helpful to free you temporarily from your afflictions, to provide relief from your afflictions. Please keep that in mind. You don't need to be afflicted. As soon as you wear you're afflicted, okay, be smart, be wiser, and say, I better address my affliction. You don't. You're operating in confusion. That's all. And that's what this Bodhisattva, this uh, celestial king, this Mahasattva, contemplated. And he says, wow, this living being, fascinating. They're drowning. They're overwhelmed by their own afflictions. And somehow... They survive every day, and each new day brings in more afflictions, and they still manage to survive. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, until one day they go crazy and shoot at the, at the monitor. Or the children. Okay? Uh, and so, uh, so he sees how helpless sentient beings are. Sentient beings are not just humans, folks. Uh, they are all beings who have feelings. So it means it pertains to your dogs, your cats, and so forth. Okay? Any living being. Uh, so he says, not only confined to mankind, but also to all sorts of beings with emotions, with feelings. So they all afflicted, have so many afflictions. And so what did he do? He says, the only way you know, for me to help them is to use compassion 
and wisdom. Compassion is referring to great compassion where he takes it very seriously. When he sees your suffering, he would take it as his suffering, his own suffering. So he'll try to relieve your suffering. Because when you get relief, he's getting relief himself. Okay? And this suffering here, this, this compassion here is universal, meaning that he is everywhere, not just for his uh, own territory, and where the the uh, Diana heavens that he is, but also uh, wherever he's able to has uh, has an opportunity, he would uh, sh show his compassion and provide relief to living beings. Why? Why can't he stop at compassion, great compassion? He says universal compassion. Why is that? I know the Chinese don't explain this. It's fascinating. In little, little details that I feel that the Chinese, especially Masha Shinoa's side, they tend to rush through this because it's just a lot of names, so what's the big deal? Just recite the name. So, you know, if you, you read the name, you're creating a lot of blessings, tremendous blessings. Okay? But I want you to have blessings and wisdom as well. So why? Why universal? He's in charge of his own third Diana heavens. Why universal? Meaning even beyond his territory. Why? To continue to improve. If you say, this is it. This is my territory. That's all I'm going to worry about. Then you will not improve. Okay? You limiting yourself. Don't do that. Okay? So that's why, why we're here. When you practice by yourself, naturally you will limit yourself. And this is why your fellow cultivators or your teachers, your good no advisor's job is to help you, remind you, okay, to push the envelope. All right? That's why universal comes in, because he doesn't have anyone to watch over him. Therefore, he's working, remember? He's busy. So since he cannot, like you, participate in a Chan Chi at DTT, okay, or online, then because he has to work. So, so, so that's why he puts his dharma is that I will expand my reach, my compassion, more and more and more and more. Okay? That's how he cultivates. These people cultivate by working. Very much like Masha Shinoa. Did. Hmm? And wisdom. Hmm. You need wisdom to help people. You don't just say, oh, she's suffering, so I want to help. Uh, bodhisattva is not good enough. When you help, you're supposed to provide relief, not make it worse. If you have no wisdom, you can make it worse for them. So instead of helping, you actually are hurting. And this is what I fault. Uh, worldly people, especially parents who have no wisdom and who feel compelled to teach their children when they have no wisdom whatsoever. That's wrong. You take your jobs, your roles seriously. I will cultivate so that I open my wisdom or ask for help from people who have wisdom to, so that I can raise my children better. The reason I say it because it was never done for me, for my parents, just like most parents. We have no wisdom, and out of love for our children, we try our best. And I'm saying that it's nice to try your best, but you can do better by becoming a better person yourself. Hmm? 
Teach by example. Don't do it like I do. I tell you, do what I tell you, don't do what I do. Okay? Uh, don't be like that. Only people with our wisdom would say that. Anyone else? Okay, next celestial king. My goodness, we are doing great. Yeah. 191, celestial king, wondrous adornment of the sounds of constellations, gain a passage into liberation of emitting light and manifesting the Buddha's three wheels to gather in and transform beings. Xing Su, Ying Miao Zhuang Yan Tian Wang, De Fang Guang Xian Fo, San Lun Shi Hua, Jie Tuo Men. Okay, commentary 192. This celestial king, wondrous adornments of the sounds of the constellations. Uh, first of all, um, he emits light like the, uh, the stars, like constellations in the, in, on the sky right there. Uh, and, um, and, uh, uh, and then there's a concept here in, of a wheel, uh, meaning it's a, a constantly turning, constantly. Okay, with low limitations, no beginning, no end. And the three wheels here refers to the body, the mouth, and mind. And uh, the Buddha state is that the three wheels, his body, mouth, and mind, can be used interchangeably. Okay, it's a state that's beyond us. Don't worry about it. Okay, and what bothers me is I need for your help. How does a constellation sound? Like, what is the sound of a constellation? I can hear, when someone gave me a wind chime recently, I can see that the wind, the sound of the wind, yes. But a constellation has a sound? How is it possible? Why? I don't know. That's why I'm asking for help. What is the sound of a constellation? A sound soft, like a whisper. Is it coarse, like a shouting? Yes, Wei Mang. Thank, thank you, Master. Um, I, I feel this is one of those answers where, uh, you know, we wouldn't know what a constellation sounds like, but uh, but he does. And it sounds like uh, technology is being described here, where the Buddha wheel is being used as a part of an elaborate cause and effect to help living beings. And the sound of the constellations is a part of that technology. So basically, give it to the AI thing, and it's uh, the magic that's going to happen. AI understands. It's your attitude. The reason uh, I'm asking, sir, is because if he's known to be a uh, celestial king, wondrous uh, constellation sounds, okay, it's because he does something that I don't understand that will, will help him, enables him to deserve such a title, such a reputation. So what is he doing? I'm curious because these are superior cultivators, superior individuals, never mind cultivators. They're busy at work. They, they, they are, take their work very seriously. So what, what is it they're doing? I'd like to know that made them earn such a reputation and deserve a big place there, an important spot in the cosmos? Hmm? Aren't you curious? To the point where they have this reputation as wondrous constellation sounds. 
People help out. Use your research. Yes Way Mountain. I, I guess if I had to imagine the sound master and describe it something that I could at my level, uh, the closest thing I can imagine Constellation sounding like would be like the, uh, like the harp music that Vicky's daughter played for us here at Way Mountain, something like that. Why would you call it harp sound instead of Constellation sound? Could be techno music, right? You know, recently I've been, uh, you know, I've been, uh, have a chance to hear some techno, those, those computer instrument thing, or thing, you know, like uh, weird sounds. Good yeah, sounds. Maybe, maybe they had it right in the 80s and synthesizers, you know, Synthesizer, sound like yeah. constellations. Yeah. Hmm. All right. And then I'm going to submit the AI thing now. Yes, anyone else? Wei Maung. Thank you, Master. Um, I've seen and I've heard some classical composers that they have like music from the stars or music from the, from the celestial beings. So I think they have something also that they can detect like the waves of the constellations and stars and they can transcribe it to music. So what he's saying is that he looks into the skies and then all of a sudden looking at the constellations, he would hear sounds. Is that, that's what he's saying. Yes, JMT. So what's a big deal? Yes, Xian'an, go ahead. Uh,这个一节音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的意思,三十九节的音的
the I think the uh, orders of the constellations that uh, are particularly beautiful and then make sound. Okay, very good. I appreciate it. I think I like Jane's uh, interpretation. Sounds are vibrations. So the movement creates vibrations. So when, when the constellation moves in the orbit, okay, they're creating uh, vibrations. Okay, and that's this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this guy here, this celestial king here, is hypersensitive. He can hear the sound of such movements. So cool. That's why he deserved the name, because only he can do it. He said, oh, wait, wait, I, let me write a music for you. This is how it sounds like. It's so cool. And then people, oh, yeah, such a beautiful sound. Okay, so it'll be Constellation Concerto number 11. All right, so cool. Thank you. And so, so cool. I'm glad I asked instead of trying to pretend I know what the constellation sound is like. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, thank you again for teaching me. Uh, and uh, uh, so he used the Buddha's three wheels to gather and transform living beings. Um, so what he did, this guy did, is um, he emit light, uh, and in order to become enlightened, he emitted light, okay? And he was very bright, he used his light of wisdom, uh, bright light of wisdom, and manifest the Buddha's three wheels to gather in uh, and transform beings. So he, he uses, uh, he manifests the mouth and body of the Buddhas, uh, he, he does that to gather in and transform beings. Gather in mm. is uh, refers to a Buddhist uh, type of dharma door or practice where it's Chinese goes su uh, uh, su fa the four uh, the four gathering in dhammas. Uh, uh, so uh, they are they are this is this is very very Buddhist. Number one, then what do you do in order to gather people, bring people to your side, okay? Uh, and bring you people into your camp. Uh, first thing is to give. Mm. You give uh, and give uh, of uh, wealth, you're giving of the Dharma, meaning you speak Dharma to them, or the giving of fearlessness. Please memorize these things. These are fundamental wisdom you should have, okay? When you said, if I want to give, what am I supposed to do? And then you're supposed to do three things, give of wealth, give, giving of wealth, giving of the Dharma, and giving of fearlessness. What can you do, okay, among those three, okay? So in order to bring people to our camp, okay, don't ask. Hmm? Don't come to people and say, like me, I'm nice. Huh? And don't, don't, don't ask for favors. In particular, I would like to remind all of my monks and nuns, when we open a way place, it's not for us to feel justified in asking you lay people to support us. You know what? Mass is coming. Well, let's have some good food for him. And, say, and, 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 and that's called climbing on conditions. So if you say that, then it's tantamount to asking for lay people to go. Because many of, 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 the, many of them will say, let me go buy something nice for him to eat. That's loaded MSG and salt and sugar. And you like it. Or the Korean would send, would bring me to have Korean pizza. <laughs> and honey. I want you Koreans to go to my pizza place here in San Francisco, you hear? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> no excuse for not going. But the point here is that when we have a, a way place, is to practice giving, not to ask our people to give to us. That's so wrong. I'm very patient with all of you because all of you are peasants. All of you are idiots, are greedy. He said, oh, now we made it. Now that we are, no, now people take us seriously. Now I think it's okay for me to encourage them to practice giving. No! Now you know. Now you establish. Now you recognize it's time for you to practice more giving, not asking. It's annoying to me how petty you are in asking our followers, our supporters for more and more and more. It's so annoying to me. But you know, I endured it for four years already up here. Okay? Please stop asking for favors. Hmm? Monks and nuns. Hmm. You should know better. For example, it's not just food, not just uh, things that the temple needs. You know, I never ask for anything. Okay, but I don't. I don't have money. I will buy it. I will buy it only when I have money. I never bought statues because I'm poor. I could not afford to pay for statues. So I decided to teach Chan, which I don't need any statues. You see, you make do. Monks and nuns are supposed to make do. I'm not the kind of person who says, I need statues, therefore let, let me do some fundraisers and, and, and there are plenty of people who will support the way place and give me money to buy statues. That's seeking. That's against the principles I learned from my teacher, my Chinese teacher. The doctrine is don't ask, don't seek, don't climb on conditions. Just because they believe in us, they follow us and support us, it doesn't give you the right to ask for more. That's climbing on conditions. That's a violation of doctrine number one. Not knowing what we stand for. You recite it every day. In the morning ceremony, evening ceremony, except for when Xin Fa does it, and then she forgets to do evening ceremony recitation. Okay, but you endure it. Don't complain. Okay, eventually she'll go back to Korea. <laughs> okay, so so you you don't you know you you decide that I will not climb on conditions. It's the very first thing that my all monks and nuns are doing is the climate conditions. Now these people are so devoted to us. They believe in us. Therefore, it's okay to ask them to buy things for us, get things for us. No, it isn't. You say, Mass is coming. Let's get some more flowers so that the temple looks nicer for him. And say, the lay people, yes, 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 let me go buy some flowers. That's terrible. Master doesn't need flowers. Master is a flower. I mean, uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> Ignore that, okay? Yeah. Who needs flowers? Come on. I mean, nice without flowers. <laughs> never mind. Let me take it back. <laughs> okay? The point here is that, okay, don't ask for anything. Please, I beg you. Don't ask. Don't even drop hints. That really, really, I'm so disappointed. I'm very patient with you because I know you peasants and you have nothing. Now you got something. It doesn't make you feel entitled to receive offerings. Okay? Just because I call you, I certify you as having made it, doesn't entitle you to receive offerings. We're still the same person as before, poor, and never climbing on conditions. It's a terrible thing. Nasha Shewa said, you know, don't climb on conditions. The first thing he says, 
don't climb on conditions. I think it's meant for us, for you. Our people believe us, therefore, we can ask for things. No, they believe us because we don't climb on conditions. If you climb on conditions, they will not believe us anymore. Okay? First principle. Second principle. When you going hungry, the point of losing your life. Okay. You don't go beg for food. So what are you doing? Begging for good food for me. That's a horrible, horrible thing. You know, I feel so bad. One end, the food tastes good. The other end, I feel guilty. But then if I say anything, I would, I would come across as ungrateful. So what am I supposed to do? So I enjoy it for a while, while it lasts. Okay, so please don't ask for food. Don't ask a good food for master. That's a horrible, horrible thing to do to me. Okay? If they, uh, they, offer, they decide to bring the food, okay, that's fine. Okay? Uh, with or without, we'll be just fine. And number three, third doctrine. Uh, Dying of poverty, we ask, we ask for nothing. It's very simple. I tell you, this is what I'm proud of. The fact that I'm poor, I'm always poor. I never look at myself as being rich or having money at all. I look at myself as very poor. Okay? Because, because, because I, I, I know I'm poor, that's why I will, not, I will not ask you for money, okay? Yeah. Because typically, yeah, the monks and nuns, this is, I don't like, eventually I do it, yeah, I, when I become more desperate, is the monks and nuns, they do fundraising left and right. It's annoying to me. I will do it, I promise you, okay? But for different reasons. But it's like when, you know, when we need a temple, we need a statue, I will make an announcement that you need, you know, I need uh, money fundraising to buy a statue and so forth. I need to fix the roof. Uh, uh, so, you know, so let's do fundraisings. Okay? Yeah. I understand why monks and nuns have to do it in general because that's the only way for them to have money to buy for those things. I'm teaching you different kind of Dharma door. You can afford it. Learn to do without. That's all. Okay? Your job is to give, not to ask. And if people happen to bring flowers to adorn a way place, don't do it your way. Let them do it their way. Don't say that, you know, uh, I want your flowers, arrange your flower my way. It's their flowers. Don't boss them around, adorning, you know, arranging flowers your way, the way you like. So practice giving. You never stop doing that as a monk. Whether you're poor or rich, it's the same thing. Whether you are stupid or have wisdom, it's the same thing. We still practice giving. Next kind of way to draw people and bring them to your side and bring them closer to you is kind words. These are cheap. You know, they're very easy. Kind words. We're not talking about K 
kissing of two people. We're talking about kind words. What are kind words? I is Chinese word. I is I love you. Are they, are they kind words? Huh? Because when you say, I love you, what are they supposed to do? I love you too? Are those kind words? What are kind words then? Words of love. The better translation is words from love. The Chinese is very abstract. They don't say, they spell it out like we do in the West. We need to be very precise in the West. We have to otherwise, in order to avoid confusion. I learned that when I first came to the United States for college. You know, I used to speak like an Asian, like kind words. And he said, kind words? Explain to me, what is kind words? I may spell it out for you, for you, all of you Asians. Okay? Kind words are the words of love, okay? Or better yet, the words from love. From your loving heart, I mean loving heart. Okay? Meaning what? It originates from your heart. It travels to your mind and down to your mouth and it comes out. I cannot be more scientific than that. You got that? It means that you speak the words that came from your hearts, not just, oh, you're so nice, your, 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 your hair. Did you, did you uh, change your hair recently? How come you so, je ne sais pas quoi? Is it kind words? It's BS. Kind words that I like you. When I really like you, I would tell you so. So don't use kind words unless you really mean it, right? It comes from your heart. Not because you learn to say, someone tells you, I love you, and you say, I love you too. Do we understand each other? I... I, I hope that when you want to gather in people, you have to be genuine about it. You can't say that Master teaches me about four dharmas or attraction of drawing people in, therefore I need to say kind words to everyone. No. You can pull them in temporarily to your camp, but you're not genuine about it. They leave you. You can, like men do, whisper sweet, tender nothings to the ears, and then by the time they get to marry you, that's when you say, hey, I have no more kind words for you. Now you're my woman. Hmm? Don't be like that. Okay? Let's be authentic. Can we agree on that? That's what will keep them around longer, whether you're a lay person or a left home person, whether it's about your personal relationship or your Dharma work as a teacher. Okay? Be genuine, be authentic. Words from love. Would be a, a better explanation than just words out of kindness. You really like someone. To find something about them that you like. Okay? Mm. 
And keep them longer if you're genuine. Number three, beneficial deeds. Okay? And this is a reminder. Talk is cheap. You can say kind words, it's cheap. If you really like me, what have you done for me? Serious. What have you done for me? You said, only talk. Say, I really like you. You know, you are such a wonderful person. And that's all you do. Talk, 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 talk. You don't do anything. You need to back up your words from love with actual deeds. If you really like me, care for me, adore me, show it to me frequently, please. Hmm? Give more frequently. Hmm? Give me kind words more frequently. Then I begin to believe that you are for real. Hmm? So you have to do something, folks. Don't just talk. Look at your parents. Learn from your parents. They love us. See how much they did for us. That's an example of ben beneficial deeds. They do things to benefit us without asking for anything. Except for when they retire, then you're supposed to support them. Out of gratitude. All right? Do something for God's sake to back up your words. It's so important to me. You know? A lot of people I know just say, I adore you. You are my teacher. I will follow you forever. And then one moment, as soon as I yelled at her, she disappeared. She said, you, I, have, I never could imagine you such a coarse person. Master, you're so violent. I said, you, I haven't done the actual beneficial deed for you that like spanking you or punching you in the mouth. Okay? You got to do something. Okay. Uh, same work is, uh, again, same work here is you share in the difficulties, being there for them, being the trenches with them, and suffer with them. There's nothing stronger in that bond where you suffer together, when you share in the good things together. The Chinese have concepts, beautiful, blood brothers, you know? When you have a brother, a blood, huh? what, do the, what do we do? Yakuza? Blood brothers? You don't know? They take a knife, they cut. Each one. And of course, do not share knives. <laughs> okay? And they go like this. And you get, you get all sorts of diseases. <laughs> not sharing. Okay? We share our blood. We suffer together. We enjoy the good times together. We'll be together. Togetherness. We stick with each other. You may not be Bodhisattva yet, but that's what you ought to be doing. Hmm? The Bodhisattva is much more advanced. They have better practices than us how to do the same work. They manifest as a drunk like us. You know, 
and get drunk like us and then do stupid things like us in order to help us. They do it, but they're not confused at all. But that's a bodhisattva. We're not like that. Start first by sticking together, enduring it. Huh? Go to the trench together. Questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Nine. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Um, today and yesterday and today, our Korean friend, FJ, and the team was showing us kindness and love by going out of their way, buying kimchi material and go home, make it and package it and gave it to us for even friends who are not here. They even pack and make sure that they get it from San Jose. So thank you very much for showing love and kindness. Thanks. Okay, so show them some Vietnamese beneficial deeds. <laughs> All right, 194, you still have a little bit of time. At that time, Celestial King Pure Wisdom's renown received the Buddha's awesome spiritual power universally contemplated the multitudes of the heavens of lesser purity, the heavens of limitless purity, and the heavens of pervasive purity, and spoke the following verse. Okay. And see, that's what he does, 195 commentary. This guy here uh, uh, received assistance from the Buddha. Uh, so he's a Mahasattva, but his, the wisdom is not quite there yet, uh, not quite complete yet. So he, uh, he, the Buddha gave him assistance so that he could contemplate okay, a lot of these heavens. Okay? and different, different types of heaven, the third dhyana heavens everywhere, to speak the verse, meaning to speak dharma for all of those cool celestial beings. Okay? Yeah. And that start, 196. The one who understands the nature, that the nature of dharma is, uh, is unobstructed, appears everywhere in countless lands of the ten directions. Okay. I'm trying, I'm trying to look ahead and see how, how should I take this. Okay. Mm. It's, kind of, it's kind of scholarly to say the one who understands. Can we just say he understands? Does it bother you? If, we, I, if I translate it, I put it as he understands. Why does he have the one? He's my Buddha. Why does it say the one, the one? He understands. It's much more intimate. The one and only. He, my Buddha. Which one do you like? Mine better, yes? Change it to he. <laughs> Please. See, I need to convince you first <laughs> before I force my views upon you. He understands that the nature of dharma is unobstructed. Okay? First concept here. Chapter 1 of the sutra. All dharmas are unobstructed. What does it mean? What 
What is obstruction? Let me explain to you a very simple way, okay? We, if we go too deep, uh, I can't explain to you. Yes, way mountain. Oh, oh, sorry, Master. I don't want to obstruct you letting us know what obstruction is. Then go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, uh, <laughs> uh, briefly, uh, my takeaway is the dharmas will not get in your way. You will not get in your way. But you drive on the street. You run into a red light. Is that obstruction or not? That's karma. So philosophical. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Huh? What does it mean, unobstructed? I'm asking you because I know most Asians would let it slide. I'm not going to allow you to do, like, do it like the Asian. Like, of course, it's obvious. It's unobstructed. Yen rung wu ai. That's what the Chinese would tell you. Okay? Yen rung wu ai da. Okay? Unobstructed. Mutually interpenetrating. Unobstructed. Say, all right, Chinese people? Okay? What does it mean? For Peter, it will not get in my way. Okay, so meaning if he see a red light, he says, Buddha, turn it to green, please. I don't want to be obstructed. Green, green, green. Yes, Chinese person in the back. Meaning that uh, Take your time. <laughs> um, it can, no matter what states come up, it can overcome it. Overcome it? Not overcome. It's not a good word. Um, yeah, sorry. I have to <laughs> yeah, I cannot describe it. Cannot describe. Indescribable. I'm not obstructed is kind of indescribable is the answer. Anyone else? It's funny, I read this everywhere in Avatamsaka Sutra. It never bothered me until tonight. I said, wait a minute, I'm not obstructed. What does it mean? Wei Maung. Thank you, Master. Uh, because the Buddha is pure, so he doesn't have any confusion, so he sees everything as unobstructed. What does it have to do with purity? I'm pure, but I see obstructions everywhere. I was, I, I was checking the Vimalakirti Sutra, and it was saying that um, when, like for example, it was one of the of the arhats was saying that the bodhisattva was impure, so that's why he was seeing a lot of impurities in this pure land. And then a bodhisattva said that no, it's not true. Uh, I don't see all those impurities, and I see every Buddha land as pure. Okay, okay, yeah. Quote a sutra and let me see, if, and and tempt me to disagree with the sutra. Yes. Seven. I found a better word. So no matter which state comes up, uh, the Dharma uh, is not moved by the states. Moved by the not states. Not moved. Are moving. Dharma are not moved. Meaning even like magnetic bodies, when you bring a magnet over, it's not going to move. So um, it's in the Six Patriarch Sutra recently, we also talked about, well, actually it came up in the Sutra, but Matthew didn't talk about it. It says something about it. So it's my fault now that I uh, didn't, uh, <laughs> I, you don't I was just thinking about it. <laughs> What's the meaning when that came up? But it said the the Dharma of uh, the Dharma door of uh, sitting meditation, Zuo Chan. 
uh, there's no obstruction, wu zhang wu ai. And then it went on to explain that. I'm asking very simple. Yeah. I'm driving the street, there's a red light. Do I see it as obstruction or not? No. Nope. So I just... You, you just... Sorry, uh, can you repeat it? You, see, you saw a light, red light when? Yes, ma'am. When I drive. What? I don't know what ever happened to you. you. You just stop and then you're not bothered by it. But isn't, that a, isn't that an obstruction? You have to stop? No. You just stop, but not bothered by it. Yes, too. It works for Kias, but not for uh, faster cars. <laughs> 네, yes. 신호등으로 얘기를 하셨는데 어, 지금 그 무에 장애가 없다라는 것은 그 신호등의 상황에 맞춰서 뭐 예를 들어서 파란 불이면 지나가고 빨간 불이면 멈추고 뭐 그렇게 그때 그때 처해, 처해진 상황의 흐름에 따라서 맞춰서 가는 게 무예라고 생각합니다. Master here, we're, we're talking about the signal. So when we say about unobstructed, I believe that when is a green light, we go. When is red light, we stop. So what Aren't you obstructed means? then? That's my, my, precisely my point. You see red light, you stop. That's obstruction to me. The red light is obstructing you. Your, your progress, your driving, you being, being obstructed. Isn't that obstruction? Do you have to have to ask my wife? <laughs> I believe that's not obstruction. What is it then? The red light is obstruction? How come every time I stop red light and I, the light turns green, someone behind me will pop, 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 pop. <laughs> hey, wake up, man. <laughs> huh? Is no obstruction? I'm obstructing someone else. 그 동양 동양 속담에 보면 그 비가 오는 날에는 남학 남학신을 팔고 해가 뜨는 날에는 양산을 팔아라라는 얘기가 있습니다. 그 얘기처럼 날씨가 어떻든 간에 그 상황에 맞춰서 거기에 잘 대처하는 게 무에 장애가 없다라는 거라고 생각합니다. There is a saying in uh, uh, in Korea, when it's rainy, they sell a shoes made with the wood, and when it's sunny, they sell umbrellas. So regardless of weathers, just situated according to the situation, follow the situation. I think that that means unob unobstructed. Uh, nice Korean wisdom. I will not touch Korean wisdom. Yes, seven. Sophia Gu says, I think that obstruction is not getting what you want. So unobstructed means that you have no desires, not greedy for anything. What about enlightenment? Yes, JMT. The rest signal, that means obstructions. But what it is, we accept that situation, not avoiding, and not uh, try to get away with it. We just wait patiently until that situation disappear. 
Very good. Hey, is that a fan uh, that's turning very slowly on on the on the intertemple thing? She sits by a fan that's kind of uh, very slowly moving. Really? Is that slow? Seriously? You have such a speed in Korea? <laughs> so it's faster. Was it on? Was it a slow speed? Seriously? Was it on? That's my question. <laughs> The speed number one. Yes. 12 단계까지 있습니다. Very slow speed. 예, 지금 일 단계를 켰습니다. So that that fan has a twelve steps. Uh, the this was the first step. Uh, first level, twelve levels, and first level of speed. So the lowest wow. speed. Korean technology. Look at that. It's, it's like it's moving or not moving. <laughs> Fascinating. Okay. Wait, Mao. Quickly, I, I need to go. We need to get back to meditation. These people are too happy. You see, they're stretching their legs and leaning back. And, you know, oh, it's so relaxing. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Master. There's a very famous scene in the American film uh, Back to the Future, and Michael J. Fox is at a stoplight, and there's a car to his right who's revving his engine and making him angry and wanting him to race. And in the scene, the car to his right takes off when the light turns green, and Michael J. Fox decides, I'm not going to go fast. And he sees that if he had raced the car, he would have gotten into a big accident. So I propose that the obstruction is not the light, but it's the anger in your mind waiting at the light, wanting it to change. So much wisdom. You guys are incredible. I can't, I can't trick you at all. Your answers are pretty good. The, the, the Chinese, I'm disappointed in my Chinese disciples. The Chinese very clear. Yuan Rong Wu Ai. It's so beautiful, and the Chinese don't get it. Why is it, it takes a Vietnamese American to explain to the Chinese their own dharmas? And I don't know why Master Shinoa's disciples never asked. What does it mean? Yuan Rong Wu Ai. If you want Vietnamese, yung yung bắc ngài, vô ngài, huh? Korean? I don't know. Huh? Yeah, what does it mean? Come on, man. Seven means you can say from one side or the other side it's all uh, workable. It's like a wishy washy or middle way. Uh. <laughs> My heart aches because I'm explaining Chinese to the Chinese. And I say, Am I that Chinese? That I understand Chinese better than the Chinese? Oh, what a horrible thing. Of course. Huh? Yin <laughs> Rong. Okay? Completely interfused. What does it mean? When you see a red light, you become a red light. When you see a green light, you become a green light. When you see love, you become hate. I mean, <laughs> see what I mean? Yin Rong is that you merge and you won. <laughs> you don't like it? Isn't it beautiful? We are the same. You and me are the same. 
Your money is my money. <laughs> Got that? <No>. Believe. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. It's it, the Chinese. It's it such a beautiful concept. Yuan Zhong is that I'm completely immersed in you, absorb you. No? Disagree, Chinese people? Chen Chen, you're so quiet today. They say, oh, I am happy. Nothing bothers me. I don't care what Master says. Huh? Agree, disagree. I'm amazed that no one ever asked him. No Chinese asked, ever even asked Master Shen Hua. And he is the best explainer of this sutra that I know of in recent times. And he didn't ask him, Yen Rong Wu Ai is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. You and me are one, are the same. So how can there be any obstructions? When you and I are the same, you want to stop, I stop. You want to move, I move. Dum, 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 dum. It's like a tango. No? It's so beautiful. We move as one. Or a people. No, no, never mind. <laughs> you got that? So, first of all, if you see yourself as one. How can there be any obstruction because you are one and the same? Meaning what? If you see yourself as one, you see no obstruction, meaning that you're not afflicted. You're afflicted because you, in other words, the converse is that you're afflicted because you're not one. You're two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. See that? You like it or not? Okay. I will take donations from... You can donate the cars tonight. Your cars are my cars. <laughs> Anyone who would like to sign up? <laughs> See, yeah, you why? You are not, you know. You Kia, I don't want Kia. So I want <laughs> yes, ma'am. Seven. I pretend I'm Andres, uh, but Master, how can you be one with red light? That sounds. <laughs> I don't understand. That's precisely. Your mind still sees the difference because you have no wisdom. Because you have no wisdom, the implications is that you are afflicted. When you see as one, one and the same, one substance, no obstructions, meaning no afflictions. You guys all alluded to that already. You just didn't express the way that, as I might say, eloquently, as... Okay? Make sense? It's beautiful. You see this everywhere in, in, in Avatam Saka Sutra. You know, Yen Rong Wu Ai. Completely interfused and unobstructed. One and the same. Okay? Hmm. Appears everywhere in countless lands of ten directions. I think time is up. Okay, so, uh, so he can appear, he does appear everywhere throughout the universe. Now, he's still doing it. That's why, that's why he's able to see this, this, this Mahasattva is able to see that, and the Buddha is appearing everywhere. 
these people. They say it because they experience it. Thanks to the Buddha's help. All right, we stop here tonight. Thank you all. Back to meditation, yes, isn't it wonderful?